Hello and welcome again to European Autocraft Studios. Not sure what this is, but we're going to explain some fuel injection. Um, we're working on the uh, Renault Renault 5 Turbo here. Kind of a unique car, uh, hard to get parts for. Very difficult to get parts for. We searched the internet, some stuff you can get in the UK, because these cars were never imported into the United States. So I have to not necessarily make a part, but I have to modify a part to work. Uh, we're working with what's called CSI, no, not crime scene injection, CIS fuel injection, continuous injection system, uh, known as KJetronic. And I'll explain all that in a little bit. In fact, we might go into a few different systems. But the CIS fuel injection system is very interesting. And since I've been working on this car, it sort of brought me back. We don't do a lot of diagnosing on CIS uh, injection because it's just, they don't really fail very much. And when they do, it's a simple fix. Fuel, uh, fuel pressure accumulator or something along those lines, or fuel pump. But this one had a very unique problem. And um, after we repaired the fuel pump, uh, fuel tank, because the fuel tank was leaking, it got hit from underneath the car, gent lightly, very light hit, uh, but it punctured the fuel tank. So that was repaired with fiberglass, but it still leaked like crazy. So we took it out and we plastic welded it. Uh, that's all back in, but he had a hard starting hot problem. The, usually on a CIS you get hard starting hot fuel pressure accumulator. That's the device that stores pressure to keep the fuel from boiling off the fuel distributor uh, when the car is hot. But that wasn't the case with this one. Um, another issue are, are vacuum leaks. Very sensitive to vacuum leaks because when you start the car there's very little vacuum but you need that vacuum to pull up on the sensor plates uh, on the fuel distributor. And I'll show you all that in a little bit. But first I want to show you one of the things we had to do to modify. These are the, the fuel injectors. This plastic piece is a sleeve that locks it into the intake manifold. Now these injectors are standard Bosch injectors. They, they're, they're different part numbers for different cars, but they all look very similar. Some have a little end on them where uh, air is uh, forced over them um, in certain applications, but we just want to stick with the basics. This is just a basic Bosch uh, CIS, CIS, CIS fuel injection. I knew I was going to do that. Um, very simple. In Bosch has just a typical O-ring seal around the injector, and they pop into some kind of a housing, depending on the type of engine, Volkswagen, Mercedes, uh, old BMWs, they all have different styles of, of connecting the Bosch injector to their engine. This one is the Renault type. Uh, the problem is I can't get these. And one of the problems when we smoke tested this was smoke pouring out around them. Now I can show you, I don't know if, you got to look in here. This is again more information that isn't necessarily uh, is <laughs> sort of relevant to your car because the Porsches, uh, the later stuff doesn't use it. But you see how loose that is. Um, I can't, these are all shrunken up in there. They, they got really hard. So what I did was, I did two of these already. Um, I put these in the drill press and I took a file and I filed out these grooves a little deeper so I could put O-rings in them. See, I put, I put some O-rings in there um, that give it a better seal. So there's two O-rings. And now, they'll be able to go in and seal nice and tight. I'll put a little lubricant on there, but those seal really nice. So that's going to eliminate that vacuum leak. And this is a turbocharged engine. Um, so we're going to, we'll, we'll be losing boost through these. We're going to be putting um, fuel and, uh, and boost pressure into the engine compartment, which is not good, especially when it blows out around these seals. There's a lot of fuel that'll go with it. So this is a must that we have to fix these. While I'm doing all this, I wanna show you a little more about how the system works. This here, if you can see my amazing diagrams, this is basically what's in this car. Um, there's a boot that covers the, this is called the sensor plate. There's a boot that covers this, and this goes off to your throttle plate. When you open the throttle, air is lifted up through here because the air filter is underneath. Air is lifted up here, clean air through the air filter, and it moves this lever. This is the piston that, that's raised and lowered. Right here, there's no fuel. The engine is off. Uh, and this 
this picture you can see that the sensor plate has lifted and it pushed this piston up just a little bit to a little bit of fuel out. And these are the fuel ports that go to the injectors. Um, inside of this uh, chamber are laser cut slits that open up as, as the piston goes up. And here, it's just the same thing. You see the fuel is uh, more fuel coming out because it's lifted up higher. Pretty simple, right? You open the throttle, you get more fuel. It gets a little more complicated than that when you get sort of when the system evolves. Um, you see there's a little terminal here. That's a switch uh, in case the engine, let's say the car rolls over in an accident, the engine shuts off, the sensor plate drops because there's no more airflow. But what if the fuel pump is still running and you have a ruptured fuel line? Big, big catastrophe. So there's a, a switch on the sensor plate that when this drops, the fuel pump shuts off. This uh, is a terminal that shuts off the fuel pump when there's no, uh, no motion here. But when you crank the engine, it lifts up just enough to come off the sensor plate, uh, come off the, the sensor plate, come off the switch, and the fuel pump will run. So everything happens simultaneously. Some cars don't have that. This particular one does not have this, um, this safety circuit. Uh, look at this crusty old fuel distributor. This one, uh, I'm not sure what car this is on. Oh, it's on a 911, a Porsche 911. You can see the uh, thermostat and the, and the uh, breather cap here. Uh, standard CIS fuel injection. Uh, you've got all, these are polyimid or plastic lines. The later ones had steel lines. It doesn't really matter. This car has braided lines, which you'll see. Um, there's another shot of what's inside of that. This is the piston. These are the, if you could see inside of it, it's a tiny little slot. Uh, this is just a shield that holds the O-ring inside this housing. And this would be, this is, this would be flipped over and pushed down inside. So each O-ring would cover one of these holes. Uh, these work on differential, differential pressure. Two chambers. You have a lower chamber and then an upper chamber. The upper chamber is, uh, is really this part. You can't see the diaphragm because it's cut out for the picture. But there's a diaphragm that covers this. Fuel pressure in the bottom and nothing in the top. When this piston is moved, the fuel comes out of here. See these ports? Fuel comes out of here, down into the upper chamber here. I wish I had one apart, I could show you a little better. But it pushes down on this diaphragm so you have more pressure on top than you do on the bottom. Differential pressure. When that pushes down, it allows fuel out of these ports. You can't really see it too well. I don't have a good picture of it. But there's a little port here that sends the fuel right up and out into the injector. Um, and all that is done using differential pressure. But we know when an engine is cold, uh, it needs more fuel to run, to start and run. That's your choke. So what we use is a warm-up regulator. That's this device right here. This is a warm-up regulator. It has an electric uh, heater inside of it. It is based on time. So as the engine warms up, uh, this also warms up electrically. That uh, changes the pressure between uh, these two ports. And that's here. This port here goes off to the warm-up regulator uh, and goes right out to uh, right out to the return back to the fuel tank. So the pressure comes up here through a little port. Uh, this is all uh, all fuel pressure from underneath. So the pressure is balanced. When you lift up the sensor plate, this can come up, the fuel comes out. But if we put more pressure here through this port, this valve, this valve right here, it's easy or harder to move. If it's cold, there's very little pressure here. So this can move much easier. That means for the same amount of airflow, this can go higher to give you a richer fuel mixture. Really simple, it gets complicated. You probably don't need to know all this stuff, but it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a great old system, it works, it works fantastic. It's called K-Jetronic. And they call it K-Jetronic because in German, uh, I think it's pronounced Krestoff or Krestoff, is fuel. And uh, Bosch labels their fuel injection systems by how they're controlled. So 
this system is controlled by fuel pressure to make the system produce fuel for the engine or meter the fuel to the engine. Uh, the D-Jetronic is density. It uses a vacuum line in the intake manifold to measure the air density. And as the air density changes, so does your fuel delivery. So that's D-Jet. L-Jet is uh, luft. It's, uh, it's controlled by airflow. Airflow meter, Most a lot of cars use the airflow system. Um, and then the KE is this system, but instead of a warm-up regulator, it uses an electronic device on the side that's controlled uh, electronically. And that uses throttle position. Uh, some use a MAP sensor that, can tr that, that measures all these different parameters so you can adjust fuel mixture. Now on this car being a turbo, we have another port on the warm-up regulator down here. Now this one, this line comes right off of the uh, boost side of the throttle plate. Uh, as the boost pressure increases, it lowers the pressure. When we lower the pressure on the top of the fuel distributor, that sensor plate can move easier. So now for the same amount of airflow coming in, we're boosting it, double, tripling the amount of air pressure. Um, we need more fuel. So more pressure, air pressure in, less fuel pressure out. The higher the sensor plate moves, the richer the fuel mixture, and now we have boost pressure. We have boost enrichment. But check this out. Somebody drilled a hole in the bottom of this. I imagine they were trying to make some kind of adjustment. Uh, there is an Allen screw in there. These are all tuned and you really shouldn't touch them. Why there's a hole there, I don't know. But that now, all our boost pressure going in comes right out here. Not all of it, but a lot of it. But it's also a vacuum leak when we're not in boost. Therefore, the engine doesn't like to start hot. Along with the other vacuum leaks, it's just a nightmare. So I was going to send this out to uh, Flowtech, uh, CIS Flowtech, a great company. They rebuild fuel distributors. They rebuild uh, warm-up regulators and, and the like. Oh, my gosh. So take another look down in here real quick, and you'll see there's our fuel distributor. Now, somebody changed the lines to uh, stainless lines and it's kind of messy down there. I'm going to straighten all that out. But there's the fuel distributor. There's our adjustment. We can put a uh, we can put a 3 millimeter allen down way down inside there and I can adjust it at idle. Uh, and there's the boot that goes to the throttle plate to pull up the sensor plate. Now, this is a 911 turbo uh, fuel distributor that we restored. This is a uh, airflow sensor housing fuel distributor assembly. Um, the difference with this one is the throttle sorry, the throttle is pulling uh, is over here and it pulls down. So when the sensor plate goes down, this goes up. Either way, the fuel distributor is metered by that piston going up. So the articulation inside of here is just a little different but the same principle. This one has six ports. You'll see all of the eight-cylinder Mercedes, they have eight ports. The Porsche 928, 1978, 79, had eight ports. Now, Bosch had the same housing. They just didn't drill the ports out. Um, pretty interesting to uh, see the evolution of CIS fuel injection. And this also has the fuel pump uh, shut off. Now, there's no pressure here, so this can just flop around. Uh, it's well balanced. Actually, you can see how the counterweight will pull it back up again. CIS fuel injection, continuous injection system. Now that sounds kind of strange. Why would you spray fuel constantly? That doesn't make sense. Is, is that port injection or is it bank fire? It's nothing like that. It just honestly sprays continuously. If there's airflow and this, this valve is, is moving up, it's spraying fuel. So it has to be metered correctly to be spraying on the back of the intake valve and just keep on spraying until that valve opens. And then when that valve closes, it just starts filling up with fuel again. Small amounts though, this is just atomized. Back in the 80s when we were working on the Audis, uh, the old Audi 5000s, the CIS fuel injection was, every car had it, every one of those cars, the Audi Quattros and all these, uh, all the Audi and Volkswagen products had it. The fuel was so bad in the 80s that it would make mountains of carbon on the back of the valve. 
Because once that valve opens and the fuel is drawn in, that first initial spray of fuel on the back of that hot valve vaporizes before it really starts to build up uh, with actual liquid fuel. Uh, and it slowly makes carbon mountains on the back of the injectors. That's happening now with uh, direct injection. There's no fuel on the back of the valves, but the spray and whatnot and, and uh, combustion, uh, when that valve is open, it picks up on the back of the colder valve and, um, and just starts to build carbon. So these direct injected cars are needing walnut shell blasting, just like we used to do back in the 80s. Uh, pretty interesting. So to prove that point, I'm going to put the injectors back in this car and I'm going to leave them out of the intake manifold and show you uh, how they spray continuously. It's pretty interesting. They actually sing at the same time. They make a real high-pitched whistle, a uh, whine when they do it. So I'm going to get that set up, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, we have the, uh, I bypassed the fuel pump uh, circuit, so it's, the fuel pump is running. Uh, I have my lovely assistant under the car uh, that's going to push up on the sensor plate. Basically, the air cleaner is out, and you can reach up and push this up just like, like the airflow would pull it up. And we're going to get fuel out of these nozzles. And you get to see the spray. They don't, don't spray really, really nice. They're going to have to be cleaned probably. They spray pretty well. There should be a nice atomized uh, mist of fuel. These are kind of spraying out okay, but um, we're going to clean those and make sure they're good when we put them back in. But take a look at this. Um, these are our nozzles. They're a little wet. They take a certain amount of pressure to open. Uh, so you have to, when, when you start to, deliver the fuel to them they have to sort of pop open so uh, go ahead and give me like a a little bit I don't know if you can see that again see how some of them spray real nice and some of them are just shooting off in a little stream okay uh, and now if we really if we really accelerate you're gonna see uh, a lot of fuel so go ahead and give me like a full throttle okay that's the uh, that's your continuous injection, continually injecting. <laughs> okay, so that's how that works. Um, you can see the more we sprayed these injectors, the better they the better pattern they came out. When there was more fuel, uh, the pattern got a little bit nicer. Uh, sometimes when they get really clogged up, the, you st start to get little streams of fuel, and it doesn't atomize well. You get misfires and things like that. So I hope you enjoy this little overview of some Bosch fuel injection. I didn't really get too in depth. Um, when you have an oxygen sensor, th this, is, this is not a US spec car, so it doesn't have an oxygen sensor. If you did, starting in 1980, with CIS fuel injection, they use what's called a frequency valve. And what that valve does, it meters the fuel at idle between the upper and lower chamber. So it can also change the fuel mixture. So if your sensor plate is, say, up at idle position, uh, you get so much fuel out, but if the oxygen sensor sees too much, it can change the pressure and alter how much fuel comes out. Uh, the KE Jetronic does all that electronically with, a, with a, uh, an oxygen sensor that came about in the late 80s. Uh, great system. Uh, it eliminates the warm-up regulator. Uh, but there's so much more to this that gets more complicated. I don't want to bore you guys. I'm sure this was a one of those videos like, what's he going to do this week? Well, <laughs> we thought we'd uh, touch base on this and, and show you how these crazy fuel injection systems work. I shouldn't say crazy. The engineering is absolutely brilliant. Uh, one more thing before we go. This here is the pivot point for this arm. Uh, it has a plate here on the end. There's a spring and a ball. Uh, and the friction, there's so little surface area you know, if you have the um, uh, if you have the the uh, plate, the the arm inside, and this is the this is the case, you have a ball here, and then a spring. There's so little uh, material touching here, uh, very little friction. It works great. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week.